Hi guys, welcome back to another video. So back at the training pitch with Omar. We're gonna get a good training session in today as always. A lot of new drills today. I've not tried any of these before, I believe. So it's gonna be some new stuff. I'm very excited to test them out. And a lot of these are gonna have a bit of a fitness element. A lot of ball work included today as well. Overall, it's just gonna be a really good session. So if you don't have a training partner, I know some of you guys have commented that you don't have a training partner to train with. Remember, there is hundreds of sessions on my channel that are specifically for individuals individual training sessions. So you can work on them without a training partner. You don't need anything else apart from yourself, maybe a few cones, but if you don't have cones, you can always use objects lying around the house. So make sure you check out the rest of the channel. But anyway, we're gonna get into the session now. And as always, we're gonna start with a warm up. So let's go. So we began today's training session as we always do with a 10 minute warm up consisting of jogging back and forth across the 18 yard box and then also including some dynamic stretches. And I know I show you this every time, but it's just that important. You really want to be taking care of your warm up before your sessions. It's not only going to improve your performance during the training, but more importantly, it's going to avoid injury. There's nothing worse than not warming up correctly and causing yourself a muscle injury. So then we got into our first technical warm up and we just did some one touch passing through these gates here back and forth. This is a really good drill to warm up with because you're actually on the move, so you're getting that blood flowing, but you're adding a technical element to it as well. And we did it all one touch. If you want to start out with two touches just to get a swing of the drill, feel free to do so and then try and get it down to one touch if you possibly can. So you're just working backwards and forwards continuous, trying to incorporate both feet during this drill as well. I know it's very tempting just to use your dominant foot the whole time, but try and force yourself to get some touches with your non-dominant foot as well. You're just going to be the better player for it, especially when it comes to passing. Shooting is important, but especially passing, that's something you do throughout the game all the time and the ball isn't always going to be on your dominant foot. So making sure you're getting a lot of touches, being able to control it in two touches, one touches, do everything that you can with your dominant foot. Then we moved into a small fitness exercise. So we've got a square and at each corner is a different color. So Omar is shouting out the color and I've got to make my way to that cone as quickly as I possibly can. And trying to make these movements football specific. So instead of turning and going towards that cone, sometimes you're going to be backpedaling because that's what it's going to be like during a match. Sometimes you have to react to the ball. You might have to backpedal a little bit, move sideways, forwards, diagonally. So we're just trying to incorporate those types of movements as well. So adding a cognitive element to it. Then we worked on another variation of the same drill, but this time incorporated the ball. So we're playing the ball back and forth, one touch, and if he says man on, I've got to play it back to him. If he says the colour of a cone, I've got to take my touch in that direction. So I need to have my head on the swivel to be aware of my surroundings so I can react and move quickly towards that coloured cone. And also from time to time, he won't pass the ball and shout out the colour, and I've got to make my way over to that, just like what we were doing in the first drill. So very exhausting drill, both physically and mentally. Lots to think about in this one. Then we moved into a small dribbling exercise with a bit of awareness included in it. So it's a bit of a fun game. So what we're doing is we're working in this triangle, working one at a time. One of us is the chaser and the other one is being chased. So I'm the chaser in this repetition. I'm trying to catch Omar, but you can only go around the triangle. You can't cut through the cones or anything like that. And you're just trying to turn sharply and keep your head up so you can see your opponent's movements and try and anticipate them. So then it was Omar's time to chase me. So as you can see, I'm keeping my head up and if he's coming towards me, turning and make him make a mistake. The only way to get out of this one is making him lose control of the ball just like that. Then we went into a mirror drill. So again, working with each other, going off each other's movements. And then I'm moving between these channels. As you can see, I've marked out little channels with the cones. I'm trying to find an empty one to get through. If I can get through without him putting his foot in the channel that I'm going through, it's a point to me. If he gets his foot in that channel by the time I've got through, it's a point to him. So he's trying to mirror my movements, stay up with me, and I'm trying to lose him. So a lot of body feints, throwing him off guard, throwing him off balance. As you can see with that one, just throwing him to one side so he's off balance so I can accelerate through the gate. Then it was Omar's time to go through. So you'll notice on this one, I think I just get my foot inside the grid. Like there. So that one wasn't a point to me. And on the next one, I think Omar lost me and got through cleanly. So this is a really good drill. You don't want to let your partner get through. Working on those movements that you will incorporate during a match. 
It's very important to be light on your toes, very agile so you can lose your opponent. And also if you're a defender as well, it's good to be able to stay light on your feet so you can keep up with the attacker. And that's what happens if you get your foot tangled up. That was absolutely hilarious. We were loving this one. I did tell Omar I was going to put this one back in slow motion and he was very happy and excited to see it back. Then we did a few reps of the exact same drill but incorporated the ball this time. So this was an excellent one for working on that close control and being unpredictable with the ball at your feet. So again, trying to find that open channel. So it's my job to move the ball as quickly back and forth as I can, throw in some body feints, trying to unbalance Omar, and then trying to get to that open gate as quick as possible so I can get through it without him putting his foot inside. And if you're the defender in this drill, this is also working on your close control and the ability to keep your head up so you're aware of your surroundings and trying to mirror the player you're guarding. So a good drill for both players in this case. So a really good one, you'll see players like Neymar, they're throwing these kind of body feints all the time. So this is a great drill for practicing it, seeing the effectiveness of certain movements with your body. So throw some step overs in, be creative with this one, enjoy it as well. It's a lot of fun. These drills are really good for competing with your teammates. You'll enjoy them, but also get some really good work out of them as well. Then we worked on a finishing drill that involves some acceleration and deceleration. So acceleration is the ability to move quickly off of the spot, which is very important, but also deceleration is important as well, and that's the ability to slow down from top speed. So a lot of people work on their acceleration all the time. That is an important attribute, being able to get off the mark quickly, but also slowing down to an abrupt stop is a very essential skill as well, especially at the higher levels, because not only as an attacker, it's gonna make you more unpredictable. You'll see players like Messi, they're stopping and starting all the time and it unbalances the defender. But also if you are a defender and you're going against an unpredictable attacker, if you have the ability to stop and start quickly when they do, you're gonna be able to track them and defend them a lot better. You're gonna be a much more effective player whatever your position is on the pitch. So always involve some deceleration anytime you're working on your acceleration as well. And we also incorporate some finishing in. So as I get to that second gate and decelerate to a absolute stop, Omar's coming in there and he's throwing the ball either side and I've got to react to it and finishing it based on what side he's thrown it in. So if he throws it in on the right side, I've got to place it with my right foot. And if he throws it on the left, I've got to work on my left foot as well. So just reacting to that ball movement, not trying to anticipate which way it's going to go, literally just waiting for the ball to come so I can be as reactive as possible. Because in a match, you're going to be able to react to so many different scenarios. So the quicker and sharper your mind can actually process information, the more effective of a player you're going to be. So for this drill, I did three sets in total, and in each set, there was four footballs to finish. So four reps per set, and it's very tiring because after each one, I'm just jogging back to the start. So it's pretty much continuous, adding that fitness element as well. So some explosive movement, some finishing, so we get some technical work in this one, and also some fitness with the continuation of our run after we finish the ball, so we could go back to the start and then continue on to the next rep immediately. Then the final exercise we did was another finishing one, but this time incorporating even more fitness elements to it. So as you can see, starting at the cone, getting some ball mastery in, so lots of little touches between the two cones, playing the ball up to Omar, getting around him, he plays the ball into the space, and then I've got to finish first time. Then down to the cones, and from the first cone to the third cone, back to the second, up to the fourth, back to the third, playing the ball to Omar, going around the opposite side, so finishing on the opposite side as well. Then going down to the speed ladder, two foot in each square, back up to Omar, around, he plays the ball into the space a third time and getting another finish on goal. So this is basically disguised fitness. We're getting a lot of work in this drill. It's gonna be a real challenge, but we're also disguising it with some technical work as well. And that's something I always like to do in my sessions. If I'm working on fitness, always try and involve the ball in some way because you're never gonna be running in a match and never touching the ball. You're always gonna be incorporating it in some way. So that's how we should train as well. And also it's a lot more stimulating to use the ball in your fitness sessions. It distracts you from the fact that you're working on your cardio, which is otherwise quite tedious as you guys know. So it's always good to involve the ball as much as possible. If you're doing agility, if you're doing speed, if you're doing cardio, whatever you're doing, always try and involve the ball as much as possible. 
All right guys, really good session with Omar there. My legs are absolutely burning right now. Completely full of lactic acid because that entire training session involves staying on the balls of your feet with a low center of gravity, getting fitness work in with a technical element to all of those drills as well. So really good stuff that's gonna translate over to a match. And if you can continuously perform those short, sharp, explosive movements while remaining at technical quality, you're gonna be a more effective player. So make sure you give some of these drills a go. I know they are more suited for partner training, but as I mentioned, you can modify some of them to be able to work on them individually as well. And if you don't want to do these, I've got hundreds of individual training sessions on my channel for you to use, working on every attribute you could possibly think of. So make sure you check out the rest of the channel if you are someone that trains alone for the majority of the time outside of your team training sessions. But if you did enjoy today's video, make sure you smash that like button, hit the subscribe button for weekly training videos, and I will see you guys in my next video.